Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to part six of my discussion on the brain and maturity. Today, we're going to be looking at the adult stage. And here we have it, the maturity chart for the adult stages. This is where things get more convicting because you realize that most adults, or perhaps even most of your life, unless you've recently matured, most of these tasks you've been missing, which have made adults feel more isolated, less connected to their communities, and more susceptible to political culting, as in identifying more with a political party than with the spirit of America itself, or whatever country you happen to be from. I will let you know how this works as we keep going. As you can see here, age 13 to the birth of the first child. Age 13 is about the earliest age at which adult level tasks may be accomplished. So, a 13 year old is supposed to have passed all these. Look at this. Cares for self and others simultaneously in mutually satisfying relationships. How many 13 year olds can do that? Remains stable in difficult situations and knows how to return self and others to joy. Number three, bonds with peers, develops group identity. Number four, takes responsibility for how personal actions affect others, including protecting self from others. Five, contributes to the community, articulates who we are as part of belonging to the community. And number six, expresses the characteristics of his or her heart in a deepening personal style. Now tell me, how many 13-year-olds have this down? How many 18-year-olds have this down? How many 21-year-olds have this down? How many 60-year-olds have this down? As you can see, in emotional maturity, our culture, our human race is way behind. But praise God, there's an answer. As I've repeated in the previous lectures, to have these tasks finished successfully requires that you first have these tasks finished, which requires that you first have these tasks finished. This is very important. So, as a friend of mine says, let's get into it. Cares for self and others simultaneously in mutually satisfying relationships. So if you take a look here at this stage that the community and parents are supposed to do, they're supposed to provide the chance to participate in group life. Well, if you don't have a group around you, you're not going to be able to successfully have multiple mutually satisfying relationships. Your friendship traits or your friendship style will be one friend here, then it dwindles, one friend there, then it dwindles, one friend over here. Because having multiple friends supports each friendship. So it's easier to maintain five friends than to maintain one, because if you have one, you have no other friends to support him or her in the connection to you. But if you have five friends, especially if they're part of a group, but even if they're not, this is still true. Each one supports the others in connecting to you in a more successful way. So, when this task fails, the person is self-centered because they've never learned to focus on others. They leave others dissatisfied and frustrated. They don't know how to care for themselves, so obviously being able to care for others comes after that. Caring for self is a prerequisite to that event. So this is the process. If you experience having successful relationships with other people, it is only because caring for self has first been learned. And as you can see, the child stage is composed of taking care of self. Every single one of the items in this list only is successful if the end result is you've learned to take care of yourself. Every single one of these tasks is composed in the big picture of taking care of yourself. Asking for what is needed. You can see how that's essential. 
can say what one thinks and feels, required to care for self, learns what brings personal satisfaction. To take care of yourself, you have to know which things bring you fulfillment so you can do more of those, and which things don't bring you personal fulfillment so you can do less of those. Number three, develops enough persistence to do hard things. Otherwise, you won't be able to hold down a job if you can't do things even when you don't feel like them. This is very important. Number four, develops personal resources and talents. So what we see here is that we need to develop our resources, our personal abilities, as well as our social resources. Having good friends you can call on to move your big projects forward may take years to build. And your talents? You might be good at public speaking, but if you've never publicly spoken, you would never know that. You may be good at writing, but if you've never written, you would never know that. So it's important to test out what gifts you have and put yourself in new and challenging situations and just see how it goes. I especially speak to the young people. This is the time to take risks within limits that your parents think are wise for you so you can grow and progress and be more of who you're meant to be. Praise the Lord. Number five, know self. You have to do these four to know who you are, otherwise you know that you exist, and that is about it. And takes responsibility to make self understandable to others. So, you have to know yourself to make others know who you are. And you have to have everything here done one through five to understand how you fit into history as part of the big picture of what life is about. You have to know who you are to know where you fit. And the big picture of what life is about and history can include traits of your relatives as well as the whole point of life, which is loving each other, serving each other, in increasingly complex and amazing ways the older you get. So, let's move down here. Others can feel dissatisfied and isolated and frustrated when you're unable to successfully support them as an adult friend. Many adult friends have this issue, which is why they cease to be friends of many people before very long. This stage is absolutely required. If you plan to have lots of success in life, you need to have this down, absolutely. Cares for self and others simultaneously in mutually satisfying relationships. Provides the chance to participate in group life. If you fail this task, is self-centered, leaves others dissatisfied and frustrated. Number two, remains stable in difficult situations and knows how to return self and others to joy. If you haven't learned this stage, you're not qualified to be a parent because nothing is worse when you're a child than when something goes wrong, having your own parent freak out, which makes you feel this is a very big deal. My mother was over concerned about my physical health to the point where whenever I had the smallest sniffle, she would freak out. And this caused me to overestimate the importance of my health in relationship to the rest of life. Health is very important. We should treasure it, but we should not panic if we eat the wrong food at someone's house or if we feel a bit under the weather a certain day, thereby causing us to choose to be non-functional that day. This is an extreme. I speak from experience. Don't go into this ditch. It is not fun. So, if you already are a parent, and your kids are grown, and you have gray hair, and you see the effects in their lives from a lack of this certain skill, I tell you, you can still learn this, it is never too late, and your adult children will notice changes in you, and they will respond positively. It can take some time, but I promise you they will. When you know how to return yourself and others to joy, it means precisely this. In a difficult situation, you can get back to a state of joy and hope yourself, and do the same for your spouse, or your children, or your peer group. This is essential. Just think of all the situations, like you go to have a game with friends at a park, 
You discover that it's raining. You're disappointed. How do you get your friends back to joy? Do you just say, well, I guess this won't work. Then everybody goes home in sadness. Or you could say, hey, it's raining. We can't play baseball, but I have another idea. We could all go to a restaurant. We could watch a movie. Then everybody gets happy again, because the thing is, their heart was hoping to have a good time with you. And if they discover that plan A doesn't work, but plan B does work, they realize they still have a chance to have a good time with you. And so the joy in your heart and everyone else's comes back almost instantly. No one likes to be hoping for something awesome and then find that that something awesome isn't going to happen anymore. So make sure in your dealings with your friends, your peers, your parents, your children, and your spouse, if there's a disappointment, immediately think of something else they would enjoy to replace the failure with so that they still can hope to have joy with you. This is the best. And what is the community and the family supposed to do? By the way, once you become a teenager, I believe the community is meant to have half the responsibility for raising this child. So parents, if your teens are tough to deal with, it's because you were never meant to raise them without community support. Raising a child through the infant stage and the child stage can happen more easily without community support. But once they become a teenager, once they're learning these tasks, they need a community so they can have a wider world upon which to test their new skills. And the community does this, affirms that the young adult will make it through difficult times. And I affirm to you and promise you, every young adult that I meet, I want to do this for because they need support, they need love, they need caring, and we can assure them it may be tough today, but the sun comes out tomorrow and even today. The sun is still shining above the clouds. Teenagers need our encouragement. Give them a hug. Tell them that you're happy that they're a part of this world, that who they are is a blessing which cannot be overestimated. Tell them you will help them in their journey to find who they are, to serve this society, and to make this world a better place for other people. This is one of the tasks I will most enjoy doing for those younger than myself. When the task fails, these teenagers conform to peer pressure and participate in negative and destructive group activities. And as you may notice, if I scroll back to the child stage, there was a piece here, number five in the child stage, fails to develop true identity, conforms to outside influences that misshape identity. This is basically telling you the very same thing. So you basically need to do two things to have a successful group identity. When you're a child, you must know yourself and take responsibility to make yourself understandable to others. And the community and the parents must guide this child in discovering the unique characteristics of the child's heart. And they also must affirm that the young adult will make it through difficult times. And the person themselves must learn to remain stable in difficult situations and know how to return themselves and others to joy. This is extremely important. So, I want to tell you, if you have an issue where you conform to peer pressure, which can happen as an adult as well, even as a married adult, and you find yourself participating in negative and destructive group activities, there is a way out. You must find who you are. You must pray for God to bring you either your own parents, who you didn't listen to, or who never trained you, or supplemental parents who can help you at any age learn these missing skills. Because an older adult who admits they have weaknesses and is willing to receive from others and mature will instantly get the respect and support of their community. Because especially if you're a man, it can be very humbling to admit that most of these tasks I've been through in the past two lectures, plus these in front of you, haven't been learned. 
but I tell you it's never too late. I speak from experience. When I was 21, I hadn't accomplished most of the tasks in this list for the adult stage, the child stage, or the infant stage. I didn't even know how to live in joy, which was step one for an infant, supposed to be learned before the age of three. But I tell you, it is possible to fix these issues. It is possible to still grow, even though you have been foolish before. So take heart and remember the scripture says the Lord loves to bring beauty out of ashes and he will restore the years or the decades that the locusts have eaten. So as you sit there, my brother, my sister, as an adult, perhaps very disconsolate, while tears of remorse stream down your cheeks, just remember, it's never too late. God still has a plan for you. And the first step to healing is realizing that you have a problem with your maturity. And no matter how severe your problem is, there is always, always, always a way out. Let's go to number three. A task that your child or teenager must learn is to bond with peers and develop a group identity. This is very fun. This is something I'm still learning because I've bonded to people who are destructive, who took from me when I need mutual peers who are at my level, which sometimes I think could be hard to find. People with similar skills, similar level of intelligence, this is important. You need people who get you, who are a lot like you, as well as those who are different from you, so your brain can learn to bond to people who are quite different, older and younger, male and female. This is essential, and the joy that you get will be colossal. This is going to be a fun year for me. Develop group identity, which is an identity that comes from a reflection back to you from an entire group. I'm part of a home church. This is very, very enjoyable for me, and my group gets more and more functional each and every day. What is the community and the family supposed to do? The parents or... Sometimes the siblings can help with this too. Some people can think back and realize how much their siblings meant to them in helping them grow up. This is extremely important. The community and the parents or siblings provide a positive environment and activities where peers can bond. Playing baseball, going on hiking trips. This is going to be fun for me too. I love doing this watching a film and then discussing it. Believe me, if you are very focused on the meaning of a film, you can watch a one hour film and then discuss it for the next two hours. Believe me, I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be so, so awesome. You feel the joy in my voice? And I'm sure you also realize that due to the fact that I'm happy on a certain track, it is easier for me due to my joy level to encourage others who are on the same track. So. Join the track of maturity and become all that you're meant to be, because to quote a phrase from a film called Awakenings, the alternative is unthinkable. What happens if you don't have this task? Succeed a loner with tendencies to isolate, excessive self-importance. I had both of this growing up. Didn't connect to people that much. I believed that I was God's gift to humanity way more than other people were. I looked down upon them. Those I saw as less gifted, I despised. Those I saw as more gifted, I was intimidated by. And those that I saw equally gifted to myself, I was in competition with. This is quite sad. And as you can see, if you can't bond to any of those three groups, there is no one left. You need to be able to bond to all kinds of people, love them, and respect them. If you have genuine love, and respect for people, and it comes out in your actions, I promise you, you will have friends coming out of your ears. This is very, very important. A person has excessive self-importance because if they've never learned to receive love from people, they have to tell themselves that they're awesome, so they have some self-confidence and a positive self-view. This is called pride. Pride is when you tell yourself that you're awesome. Humility is when others tell you that you're awesome, and you humbly receive it and you use that confidence to bless others. A healthy person uses their power to bless others. An unhealthy person 
uses their power to show off how awesome they are, which nobody believes. Number four, this person takes responsibility for how personal actions affect others, including protecting others from self. So you have to realize if you go to the gas station to buy food for a friend, but you forgot your wallet, your action will affect them. They'll feel disappointment as you blush at the cash register realizing, I can't pay for this. Do you, awkward pause, want to pay for this? This is what can happen. So when you have this experience, it will teach you, make sure you take the preparations before you reach out to bless someone else because you could put yourself in an awkward situation unnecessarily. So you also need to learn to protect others from yourself. Suppose you have weaknesses. Suppose that you are somebody with a tendency towards pedophilia. This person with community support can learn to have this drive always in check. This requires community support and prayer. It is the same with somebody who has homosexual tendencies, who, as a follower of Christ, has decided they'll resist these tendencies. Believe me, it's no harder for you than for me as a heterosexual to stay single. I think the craving of homosexuals to have a spouse of their same gender has been overestimated because their drive is, is with the same force as a heterosexual towards an opposite gender spouse. And I can tell you from experience, Paul says, it is a blessing to be single. If you are fulfilled in blessing others, whether your sexuality is heterosexual or homosexual, not participating in it is pretty easy if you have good friends and community fulfillment. And there are many homosexuals who want to be good Christians who will be relieved to hear this. Abstinence is not so hard if you have these two things in place. Like I've just said, it is no tougher than a heterosexual abstaining for reasons of wanting to serve the world in a way that I could not if I had a wife or children. So, as I've just said, if you think that denying yourself your sex drive is a blessing, ask God to fill your life with good friends, lots of activities, lots of exercise, and lots of chances to bless other people, and believe me, you'll be just fine. Even the most conservative churches, if they discover that you are homosexual but are abstaining for the sake of God's kingdom, they will respect you and they will support you. Because we cannot change our inner drives. Only God can do that. But by God's grace, we can change our actions. So, moving on. What is the community or the adult? I'm sorry, the community or the parents, or possibly the siblings, supposed to do. Although, say ideally, your siblings and your parents and your community should support you in learning this task for the best possible outcome. But we don't live in an we don't live in an ideal world, and so if there is missing pieces, work with what you have and pray for more. That's the formula. The community and the young adult. I'm sorry. The community and the parents of the siblings will teach the young adults that their behaviors impact others and impact history. Do you think Samson would have lain with Delilah if he realized that his mistake would result those who read his story to writhe in disgust for thousands of years afterward? Did he really want everyone to know what he did? Did David really think that his little mistake with Bathsheba, where he saw her bathing on the roof, would result in 3,000 years of people shaking their heads saying, boy, that was stupid. When he gets to heaven, he might blush a little bit, but thankfully, God's grace covers everything. On the other hand, if you do something good, suppose that I take my experience. When I was in Hawaii, I remember hugging many women, and some of them told me that they've never felt hugged by a safe man in their entire lives. The ripples of that 
because that extends to hundreds and hundreds of women, I know will be very great into eternity. And so, remember, every little thing that you do to bless others may have a big effect into the future. Never underestimate it. So rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. And the rest of the text says, For so persecuted they the prophets, which were before you. Why does it say this? It says this because when you're blessing other people, the devil may work with his agents to persecute you. But don't give up. Keep serving. The joy on the faces of those who you have blessed will redound into eternity. Amen and amen. What happens if you don't have this task successfully passed? The person is controlling, harmful, blaming, and unprotective to others. Why are they controlling? Because they don't realize how their actions can hurt others, their spouse, their children, their parents, their friends. Harmful, blaming, because they've never learned to take responsibility for their actions. So they act in harmful ways, but don't accept that they have hurt others. They blame others when they take an action that has negative consequences that may affect their entire family. And the result is that they blame someone else because they can't admit to their family, I did this, it was my mistake. If you want to earn the respect of people, admit your mistakes and the consequences of them publicly. Of course, there are some people who could be hurt by this revelation, so some wisdom is required. But if you're a teenager and you've done nothing that serious that may affect others, or even if you have, you must ask for guidance because a teenager who publicly admits the effects of their mistakes and publicly apologizes will earn the respect of their community very quickly. That is one special teenager. So, remember, your power in your community is automatically handed to you when you become a teenager. Your choice is to use it for good or for ill. You will have an influence. That is a guarantee. What kind of influence you have is up to you. Why can such a person who hasn't learned these tasks be unprotective to others? Well, because they won't be able to see what other people need, or they don't care, or they may do things that are unwise and then be unable to admit, I did this, I hurt you, I'm very sorry. This is a requirement to go to step five. The adult must learn to contribute to the community and to articulate who we are as part of belonging to the community. They must contribute in ways that bless the community and make sure the community tells them this is a blessing and not just, I know you enjoyed doing that, but we didn't find it very life-giving. If you want to be a community contributor, you must be willing to accept feedback. Otherwise, you're not a good community leader. If you're parenting children, you must be willing to accept feedback, especially when they become teenagers. Otherwise, you're not a good parent. So, this person must also learn to articulate who we are as part of belonging to the community. We must articulate the identity of the whole group, which requires going through the previous stages. I could explain exactly how, but that would take an hour. If you prayerfully read through the previous stages of the infant, child, and adult stage, I'm sure this concept will become clear to you. What is the community and the parents and potentially siblings need to do? Provide opportunities to be involved in important community tasks. Your community needs to give you the chance to work with the group to bless others. This is extremely empowering and extremely fulfilling. And often you can help people as a whole group when an individual cannot. This is absolutely essential. It is very important that we work with people in groups who are very needy because if you do this individually, they can drag you down and now you need to be rescued. It's the very same principle 
is helping somebody who is drowning. Those who are raised in swimming realize that if you try to rescue two drowning swimmers, you could drown yourself. But if you're skilled, you can rescue one person. But it's important that this person not panic, because otherwise they could hurt you or drag you down. So don't try to rescue a person in life who's drowning, who's very needy, who by yourself, because you could drag yourself down. This requires a community evaluation of your personal maturity and the community's maturity, which will allow you to know, can I bite off and chew this task or not? Be very careful and very prayerful because many well-intentioned people have crashed and burned their lives because they didn't take note of this. And then they find that their safe space has been violated by a needy person and now they're stuck. And extricating themselves from this, situ from this situation can be quite uncomfortable and quite awkward. What happens when this task fails of properly contributing to the community? The person does not become a life-giving contributor to the community. They just become a member who never gives, but can only receive in a needy way. Even if you have learned task four, that's learning to not hurt others, but task five is learning to bless others. And to articulate who we are as part of belonging to the community, which requires enough knowledge of yourself so you can now begin to learn who other people are. This is very essential. A person who hasn't learned this is self-absorbed and uses others, draining society. They don't care about others and their needs. They don't seek to make you into more of you. They seek to use you to serve them. Many parents hurt their kids by doing this, raising their kids to be their slaves or their servants in some way, where the child feels, if I don't do my life, in the way that my parents want, if I don't become who they want me to be, they won't be happy with me. They'll be upset at me. But in the original language, this text says the following, train up a child in his way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. What this is saying is raise a child with the awareness of the unique traits and make sure that you foster and encourage the unique talents. Public speaking, physical strength, and aggressive personality, which is not bad, can be misused or used properly. Or a person who is mechanically skilled. Some people are mechanically skilled, but were pushed into academic work. They're not happy. Some people are academically skilled, but pushed into mechanical work. They are not happy. Or as in my case, pushed into academic work 10 years behind my capacity in second grade. I was not happy. When you realize that you're doing things that match your skill level and your interests, and you're able to serve others in a life-giving way, you become one happy camper. Step six, expresses the characteristics of his or her heart in a deepening personal style. This is very important because you need to express who you are to others in a deepening way that tells them who you are and that brings great blessings to them. This community fulfillment can be very, very high. For example, suppose that you're a gifted public speaker. You can talk about ideas that you want to share in your community and explain that you love public speaking and this will result in people giving you chances to speak where you can share on many topics like being a part of Toastmasters, for example. This is very, very important. Holds the person accountable while still accepting and affirming the aspects of his or her true self. So what you need to do is if the person seeks to bless the community but ends up causing pain, we hold the person accountable and say, you made a mistake here. How are you going to make this right? And if they're willing to accept responsibility for their mistake, 
say they are sorry, and work to rectify the situation and make restitution, they have restored their honor in the community, and they will now have the chance to be a blessing in a way that possibly the community shall recommend until they learn to innately know what the community needs and how to bless them. So you need to hold the person accountable while still accepting and affirming the aspects of his or her true self. Many parents fail to do this. They hold their child accountable in a way that makes the child feel that the parents have forgotten all about the positive traits in the child and or the positive actions the child has ever done. So this is something that needs to be fixed in parents. I understand if you're watching this as a parent, you may be very convicted right now. Do not despair. Do not take offense just because you discover that there's missing pieces in your maturity, which you might very wish very much that you had, but don't have. Don't give up. Keep going in your maturity track and realize that all of the immaturity that you have because of your parents' mistakes can be fixed. And all of the issues that your spouse or kids may have because of your mistakes can also be fixed. Do not despair. The Lord shall be a lead unto you. If you feel stuck in the darkness, despair not, for Christ shall give you light. If this person is driven to play roles, it'll come from lack of accomplishing this task. They'll play roles to get approval, but they will not be their true self. They won't be able to share with others who they really are. They'll seek to prove who they are to the world, rather than enjoying who they are, which will cause the world to approve. Interesting how that works. They'll seek to get results, in other words, get into jobs with high pay but low fulfillment, or a job that doesn't match their true personal heart, and they will seek approval from others when they've never learned how to do the things which will naturally result in approval. So, I hope this has been informative for you, and let's finish with the summaries up here. Primary task to be completed during this stage, taking care of two people simultaneously. Obviously, by the time you get to stage five and six, you could be taking care of 10 people, 20 at the same time. This is very important. So taking care of others in a way where they tell you it's working is a blessing. Primary resulting problem when this task is not completed, lacks the capacity to be in mutually satisfying relationships. What this is basically saying is if you haven't passed all of the tasks in this chart that I just went through, getting married will be very unwise because you will suffer. Get married when you have enough love to give and when you're ready to enter a relationship where you can give love continually. Never get married to receive love. Your marriage won't work very well because chances are the person to which you're getting married may have the same idea, and you'll have two needy people, as a friend of mine said, sucking value from each other, but they're both empty, so the marriage will be miserable if it doesn't end in divorce. This is a sad fact in society. This issue is so common. But believe me, if you're already married, and you already have kids, and you're already suffering, and there's so much water already under the bridge, do not despair. Jesus will help you. Never, ever give up. You will know when a person has graduated from the child level of maturity to the adult level because he or she will shift from being a self-centered person to a both-centered adult that can think about my needs and yours too. While the child needs to learn me-centered fairness, how do I make it fair for me? which I've been learning as an adult still, because I would tend to make it fair for them, but not for me. That's called the doormat syndrome. If you haven't learned to take care of yourself already, to take care of others will not work well because you'll be doing it in ways 
that are overly imperceptive of their needs, while simultaneously not spending enough energy to take care of yourself and make yourself happy. Believe me, I didn't learn this growing up because the message was, be a doormat and serve others and don't think about what you need to enter the kingdom of God. This is very, very dysfunctional. Parents who think this way cause suffering to their children, sometimes intense suffering. An adult learns we-centered fairness, which is the next stage. How do I make it fair for us? So obviously, you must first learn how to make it fair for yourself. If you haven't learned that, you must go back and learn this, which can be tough if you're already committed to relationships that require you to care for someone else as well. But believe me, it is possible. Your spouse will be happier to hear you need a one-week break to work on yourself than to hear I'm divorcing you. Believe me, if you're under pressure and it comes to those two options, they will choose the first, even if they're immature. An adult learns we-centered fairness. How do I make it fair for us? And then you can have many friends because if you're able to, if you show that you can care for yourself, they will respect you. If you show that you can care for them also, they will trust you. Then you'll have a real friend. Mutuality is the trademark of an adult. Because he or she can take care of two people at the same time, this is very essential. I hope this discussion has been helpful, has cleared up some lies you may have previously believed about life, and has helped you to see that even in suffering, there is always a way out. In closing, I'll read through these. When people with adult bodies are functioning below the adult level of maturity, you will know, because in the end, your interactions with them will never feel mutual. You will always go away feeling like in order to maintain a relationship with them, you will always need to give more, listen more, or tolerate more than they would ever be willing to do for you. This is the classic trademark. I think that sentence was self-explanatory. Adults know how to remain stable in difficult situations and can return themselves and others to joy. People who cannot do this will either avoid, escape, or get stuck in certain emotions, crippling many of their endeavors and relationships. Example, if I avoid all anger, it eventually explodes into rage. Because if you go back here to the infant stage, you must learn how to return to joy from every unpleasant emotion. So in the anger example, how do I get from being angry to not being angry quickly so that it doesn't last for days or weeks or months or years? You express, I'm angry, you hurt me, let's work through this together, then we can have a successful relationship. This is absolutely essential. I mean, this chart should be known by all humans on earth so they can learn how to successfully help people and how to grow themselves, and then they can have true joy. Believe me, if you haven't passed these maturity tasks in your life, deep, deep joy is impossible, straight up. What's the last sentence here? If I get stuck in shame and failure, I may become depressed or even suicidal. How many people commit suicide each year? Look this up. These people need someone to synchronize with them to help them get past those negative feelings. And once they can get past them, which requires being able to have some of these tasks learned to even be talked out of suicide, if you can't return to joy from every unpleasant emotion, like failure or shame, someone else can walk you through. But this requires having some sense of yourself through relationships. It requires learning how to receive the counsel that you're being given. It requires trust, and it requires some level of living in joy. Otherwise, you won't realize that being suicidal isn't normal. Perhaps your parents were also. So, as you can see, in the end, it's God that helps people, especially with these stages as an adult, that can be tougher to reach. But when you connect to people in the community, they can see the weaknesses you have and help you and actually discuss with you each of these tasks and say, have I done this? Do I have symptoms of this? If I do, then I haven't done this, which means I need this. Believe me, 
Even in our broken world today, if you pray, you can find people as an adult, any age of adult, who will help you learn these tasks so you can thrive more. And these tasks so you can thrive even more. And these tasks so you can thrive still more. And amazing as it seems, I still haven't covered any tasks required that you need to have in order to be a parent. That is something which is still ahead of us. Something which everything I've discussed in the past three videos is a prerequisite to. I know this is intense, possibly overwhelming, but believe me, the straight truth first causes great pain and then great joy as you realize, I can actually escape this. I can actually go from a painful place to a joyful place. If I escape pain and rejection by doing drugs, which is an addiction, or having a sordid affair, which is also addiction, I've only increased my misery and suffering. Many people who've done both of those can attest to that. So, I believe I've given you quite an hour, but prayerfully consider what I've said, and may your life be more blessed and wiser than it was before. Thank you, amen, and good night.